Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to this very special edition of the Main Event Talk right here on YouTube. I am the Main Event Player to Super C coming back at you. And, well, it took me a while, but uh, here I am, and I'm finally going to get this out of the way once and for all. Uh, it took me, you know, a while to get this out of the way. I was hoping I was going to do this yesterday, but I didn't get a chance to because of work and because of everything else. Because I wanted to talk about what took place this past Sunday night at Bound for Glory. That was the topic of discussion that I wanted to talk about. I was going to do it on Monday, did not do it. I was going to do it on Tuesday, did not do it. It's Wednesday, October 20, 23rd, I believe. And now I get the opportunity to speak to all of you and tell you exactly what's on my mind about TNA's Bound for Glory. Now, I would love to tell you exactly what's on my mind when it comes to WWE Raw, but unfortunately, WWE Raw was a whole lot better than Bound for Glory. Oh yeah, a whole lot better than Bound for Glory. If you saw everything that happened on Monday night, you know what's going on. You know that this Sunday, exclusively on pay-per-view, you're going to see the vacated title finally being decided with Daniel Bryan going one-on-one -on -one against Randy Orton with Shawn Michaels as a special guest referee. And Hell in the Cell is the structure that both men will take on. So... Uh, my prediction on that, it's its the easiest prediction of them all. I would love for it to be Daniel Bryan, but for some odd reason, Randy Orton's going to win it. The face of the WWE may win the championship this Sunday on pay-per-view. And also the returning John Cena will go one-on-one -on -one against Alberto Del Rio for the World Heavyweight Championship. A lot of people say it's too soon for John Cena to show up. Personally... I was hoping he'd be gone a whole lot longer than six months. That's my opinion. Nothing against John Cena, but he needs to stay the hell away from the ring. I'm sorry. With all due respect to you, John Cena, please stay the fuck away from the ring. But unfortunately, you're coming. There's nothing we can do about it. And now you're going to take on Alberto Del Rio for the World Heavyweight Championship at Hell in a Cell. There's a whole lot more I want to talk about. Uh, about Hell in a Cell, but I'm going to keep that in the near future. Let's talk about Bound for Glory. Let's talk about possibly the worst pay-per-view I've ever seen. I mean, well, let me let me be honest off the back. I did not see the pay-per-view. I did not order the pay-per-view, which was a very good thing on my part. Usually, usually in these cases, I would go ahead and order the pay-per-view. I would get it out of the way, you know, just, you know order it, it's done, you see it, and it's over, okay? And then the viewers come in and, uh, you know, start talking shit. Hey, this match was wrong. Hey, this match fucking sucked. Hey, this match was 10 stars. This match was 20 stars. That match should have gone longer than 60 minutes. But Bound for Glory, oh my fucking God. Uh, like I said, I didn't see the pay-per-view, but I know exactly what happened. I was reading through all the Facebook pages from everything from... Uh, the BTC Wrestling page, you know, big shout out to them, and also to the Pro Wrestling Spotlight, you know, big shout out to them as well. They kept an ongoing report about what's been going on at Bound for Glory. So let me go right off the back and start at the very, very beginning of the Gauntlet Tag Team Match. The winner of that matchup would face off against Gunner and Storm for the Tag Team Titles. And the winner of that matchup, you had, let's see, you had Bad Influence. Uh, Hernandez and Chavo, you had uh, Joseph Park and, um, let's see, uh, Eric Young, and I believe you also had The Bromance. Anyways, let's move on with that. Um, who wins the matchup? Bromance. And you had that muscled up, jacked up Mr. Olympia... Why the fuck do you get this guy? Where, where the fuck do you get this guy from? He, he's the, he's a well-known muscle guy and all this. Uh, you know what? I don't give a flying fuck who he is. If he's a wrestler, that's fine. If he was from the WWE, that's fine. It would make a whole lot of sense. If he's from some muscle-bound place that nobody gives a flying fuck about, then he means absolutely nothing. So... I, I would love to talk about what happened at the tag team title match, but I'll save that for just a moment. Let's talk. Let's further out that one, get out of the countdown show, and go right into the Ultimate X match. Now, you had the ta the champion Manic defending the championship against Jeff Hardy, Austin Aries, um, Chris Sabin, and uh, Samoa Joe. And who wins the match? Chris Sabin. Now, automatically. 
I was reading through the reports, and already people were already pissed off the fact that Chris Sabin won. Now, my opinion, if I book this match, this all-star ultimate X match, first of all, from what I understand, the match didn't last so long. It should have lasted a whole lot longer. And, you know, plus I wasn't sure how much excitement was put into the Ultimate X match. But if I had it my way, if I had it my way, one of the people that I definitely would love to see become Ultimate, uh, the uh, X Division champion, it's the obvious of them all. I would love for it to be Austin Aries. Austin, you know, definitely. It would be great to have Austin Aries become champion. But it would be even better if you had Jeff Hardy to win the match. Why? Quite simple. Number one, it's the first time that Jeff Hardy has ever been in Ultimate X. And second, Jeff Hardy has never won the, Ultim the X Division Championship. So come on, it makes perfect sense. You make him win it, or you make Austin Aries win it, okay? Samoa Joe, with all due respect, love the guy, he's great. And then you got Chris Sabin, a great veteran. I really don't see him winning the championship. Maybe the following pay-per-view, but that's about it. And Manic, I think we can all agree when I say Manic is a tremendous wrestler. But I like Suicide a whole lot better. Because it makes a whole lot of sense. Manic, what? Suicide, yeah, that works. Word of advice, TNA, fix your wrestlers, please. Fix the names, okay? But nonetheless, Chris Sabin wins it, he wins the championship, he moves on, and already the second matchup, and it totally fucking sucks. Now, remember the first matchup I was talking about? The gauntlet match where the bromance win, win their tag team match? Now they move on to face off against a great team in the form of Gunner and Storm for the tag team titles. Who wins that matchup? The bromance. And I was reading through a page. I was reading through this little page where somebody says, Thank God it's about time these guys won the tag team titles. Please don't make me say it. You know, you know what, fuck it, it's my show, I'm going to say it anyway. Are you serious, bro? God, I'm sick of hearing that. And, and I'm from Texas. <laughs> but anyways... The point is, you know, if here's my opinion about that tag team title match. Let's begin with the gauntlet. If, if there was one team that I would love to see face off against Gunner and Storm for the tag team titles, it would be Bad Influence. You want to know why? Bad Influence right now, they are still a hot tag team. They are entertaining to watch. They're great to look at. They're great wrestlers. Two former X Division champions. Two former tag team champions. They're great to watch. And put them up against Gunner and Storm. And you know what you got? You got yourself an A-plus tag team match. And if they win, it would be worth it. And TNA wouldn't have to suffer the fate that they've already suffered already. Thanks to Bromance for them winning the tag team titles. And having to have that muscle-bound meathead in Mr. Olympia. But nonetheless, already, number three, fucked up. Messed up bad. What the fuck can you do? Okay? Now, let's get on to something else that was, uh, I would say a little bit worse, but not really. Kurt Angle inducted into the TNA Hall of Fame, and he turns it down. Which, in many ways possible, and I'll be honest, I'm glad he turned it down. And it's not like he doesn't deserve it. It's not like he doesn't deserve it. It's the fact that you kind of need to see this from my perspective. You're talking about an Olympic gold medalist, a great wrestler, one of the greatest wrestlers of all time, has held on to every championship in the WWE and in TNA, has faced off against many of the best wrestlers from Hulk Hogan to Ric Flair to AJ Styles to Samoa Joe and so forth. Kurt Angle truly deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. But whether he deserves to be in the TNA Hall of Fame with Sting, it's up to him. And personally to me, I mean, my, my opinion about the Hall of Fame, my opinion on the TNA Hall of Fame, you know, it's, first of all, I, I felt, and I said this last year, 
that it's too soon. I, don't, I think if TNA was still going on, and if there was 10 more years of TNA, then it'd be the right time to have a Hall of Fame. And, and personally, my opinion, my opinion only, if there was going to be a superstar that was going to be inducted into the TNA Hall of Fame, I would love for Sting to be one of them, but if, the, if there was anyone that deserves to be in it, it's Jeff Jarrett. That's my opinion, okay? My opinion only. But Kurt Angle, he turns it down. It's over. And, well, we'll see what happens this coming Thursday about what, what's in the future in store for Kurt Angle. Now, the Knockouts Championship, another great matchup. ODB versus Brooke versus Gail Kim. Now, my prediction on that one was quite simple. I wanted Brooke to win. Straight up, I wanted Brooke to win because, number one, it's been a long time since we've seen Brooke become champion. And, would have been, you know, with the way she is right now, especially with Bully Ray, it would be great to see her become the knockouts champion once again. But, Gail Kim comes along and apparently is lined up with um, this new woman. I forgot what her name is, but I know that uh, she is... Um, she is the, the daughter of the Barbarian. I, I believe that's correct. So she's lined up with Gail Kim and um, wins the Knockouts Championship. Well, some people think it's a great match, and I don't know. I mean, I, I still think that Brooke should have won it, in my opinion, for several reasons. Number one, I think she's the hottest woman in all of TNA. And number two, she has got the best ass in TNA. That's my opinion, okay? I'm not going to lie. I'm sorry. Plus, she's from Houston, Texas, so it makes her even extremely hot, okay? Any woman from Texas is extremely hot. That's for me. You don't like it? Tough. Let's move on, shall we? Let's get to um, another great matchup that took place, uh, Kurt Angle versus uh, Robert Roode. Now, this was the bright side, unfortunately, to TNA's Bound for Glory, okay? Kurt Angle... And um, Robert Roode had a tremendous matchup. It was uh, great in many ways. Like I said, it, I didn't see the pay-per-view, but I've been reading a lot of the reviews. Uh, everybody was um, looking at the matchup. Robert Roode did win his matchup. He, uh, I think Kurt Angle was in a stretcher of some kind, had a neck brace, and was carted off out of the ring. And then uh, he, and then Kurt Angle got a stretcher and walked out of his own power. So. You know, another great matchup. You know, I would have loved to have seen that matchup between Robert Root and Kurt Angle. So that kind of made up for a few things that happened at the beginning of the Bound for Glory pay-per-view. Also, Sting versus Magnus. Uh, Sting won his... Uh, well, not Sting, I'm sorry. Magnus won his matchup, obviously. And uh, I don't know exactly what happened. I know that he shook hands with Sting and then he walked off. I know they had a great matchup. And I think something about Sting messed up his Scorpion Deathlock... I think he, I don't know if he messed it up or fucked it up or some way, but I, I was reading through some of the Facebook pages where uh, somebody said that he put on the Scorpion Deathlock, but he had it on backwards or something like that. So I'm like, really? Goddamn, how'd that happen? Shit. But nonetheless, Magnus wins. Um, Sting lived up to his promise and elevated Magnus into a whole different, uh, you know, basically put him on top or something like that. And it's a good move on Sting's part, in my opinion. I feel that... I, I have a lot of respect for Magnus. Uh, you know, I, I loved him since um, uh, the British Invasion when he was a part of that. And, um, you know, to me, Magnus is one of the hottest uh, superstars in all of TNA. And it'd be great to see him in a world title match in the near future. So that's my opinion. Now, um, and there was a few other things that I, for, uh, that I forgot to mention. Okay, let's see. For instance, the return of the Abyss. Abyss, the monster, he's back. Okay. Now, there's one part that I'm going to mention. I'm going to mention it right here, right now, exclusively right here in the Main Event Talk. And I want Dixie Carter and TNA and everyone else to listen to this from the sound of the Main Event when I tell you this. Get rid of Joseph Park, okay? Get rid of the stinking lawyer. We have dealed with this lawyer for over a year and a half. A year and a half of this guy coming in in a suit looking like a complete dumbass, not knowing how to wrestle. And you know what's funny? We all know it's Abyss, okay? 
you know, a dumbass can figure out that that was abyss. Joseph Park is abyss. So.